In this video, we're just going to have a short discussion about your Tesla Powerwall and how it decides to charge in the grid if you've had it set up that way and remind you that it is pretty good, but it's not a mind reader. Okay, so I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos, but quite a few people have been reaching out to me, both uh, in comments to videos on Twitter, in the Discord channel, and other areas. So I thought I'd just do a quick video to kind of remind people on how your Tesla Powerwall 2 is working, um, with a little caveat of maybe the Gateway 2 version works a little bit differently, I don't know, because I don't have one, but to my mind it probably is going to be quite similar. So. This really relates if you've set your Tesla Powerwall 2 up uh, in the advanced mode so that you are using uh, cost saving or balance mode to basically utilize some energy from the grid. Now, if you just aren't doing that, then you can stop this video now because it's probably not going to be much interest to you unless you're thinking about um, moving to an economy tariff or something or a time of use tariff. Uh, depending on what country you're in. Um, but yeah, so this, I'm talking about how I have it set up and um, yeah, basically how it works so you can keep it in mind. So as mentioned in previous videos, I have my electricity and gas with Octopus Energy and I'm on their Octopus Go tariff. Uh, if you're looking to change a provider, please consider uh, Octopus Energy, the best electric company I've ever used so far. And there's a link in the description below. If you join with this link, you and I both get £50. But um, yeah, it works really, really well. And basically what I have is this economy tariff that starts at half past midnight until half past four in the morning. And at the time of doing this video, that current tariff um, gets me electricity at five pence a kilowatt. So what my Powerwall is set up to do is knows that uh, up until 12.30 in the morning is peak time, then from 12.30 a.m. until 4.30 a.m. is off-peak time, and from 4.30 a.m. all the way back through until 12.30 a.m. again, the following morning is peak time. So what, um, what basically Powerwall is doing is basically trying to make decisions on when is best to pull from the grid and when is best to supply power from Powerwall. Now, when you first set this up uh, and enable that feature, it can take anything from kind of 24 hours um, to kind of 72 hours. I've noticed different people had different experiences, but generally within a week, uh, the power should definitely be working uh, in the way that you expect it to do, assuming it's not when it's first been turned on because there's a lot of learning stuff um, that goes on. There has been a couple of instances. Um, Ed, who's been on my channel before, he had an issue where for some reason, even though this was turned on, it wasn't working properly. So we had to contact Tesla, they did something on there and it began, began working straight away. So keep that in mind. So enable this feature, if it hasn't started doing its thing within a week, uh, then contact Tesla and they can kind of log on remotely and see what's happening. But basically the way this works is Powerwall is doing a few things. First of all, it's learning how you use energy in your house on a day by day basis. And I really mean that. So. What do you typically do on a Monday? What do you typically do on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? And it kind of keeps that in mind. When are you using electricity? Um, how much do you need, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's also looking at weather forecasting in your area to try and decide, okay, is the forecast that you have for the next day going to generate enough solar to fill the power wall for the energy usage that you require? And then basically what it's doing is when it gets to your off-peak time, it's saying, right, okay, if you're charging your car or heating hot water or something like that, it will typically pull from the grid because that electricity is at the cheapest rate. So anything that's left in the power, it makes sense to use that energy outside of that off-peak time. So it, so like myself personally, I might charge my car during the off-peak time. I may also heat my hot water um, during the off-peak time as well. So the power won't supply energy for that. It will allow it to be pulled from the grid. And then basically it says, oh, so typically um, on a Monday, Dale uses this much electricity. I think the weather forecast 
will give him what he needs. So I won't pull anything from the grid. Now with one exception, it does tend to do um, like power cycling to do some maintenance activities. So it will pull a small amount um, from the grid. But if it thinks that typically on a Monday, um, I use, let, let's use this as usual example, I use 20 kilowatts and thinks it's going to generate that or more from solar, it won't do anything. If on Tuesday it thinks um, I tend to use 25 kilowatts, and again the weather forecast it looks reasonable, I'm going to generate 20 kilowatts, it will assume that there's going to be a 5 kilowatt difference. So it will pull 5 kilowatts from the grid into the power wall and then start using that after the off peak um, has gone off. Now, obviously, as it goes, as you transition from autumn into winter, it tends to be more aggressive um, in charging the power wall. Um, just like I think the, um, two nights ago, it fully charged from the grid because it knew um, the weather wasn't really so good. Every now and then it does make a little mistake, it overcharges and the weather turns out being pretty good. Um, so you end up exporting some of you out of the car to charge or anything like that. But I'm not actually that worried about that because now I have electric vehicles and stuff. It's very rare that I have too much to put back into the grid, especially over the winter time. So, and it basically does that on every single day of the week. So if you always plug your car in at say nine o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, it will know that typically on a Wednesday you're doing that activity. And so it will kind of hopefully pull from the grid to fully charge your power because it knows you're pulling a massive amount on Wednesdays. The important thing to remember here is that it's only doing things based on history and weather prediction. It's not a mind reader. So if you don't normally charge your car on Wednesdays and you plug it in, don't be surprised that you know it didn't pull anything from the grid. It doesn't know what you're going to do. But if you have then plugged your car in and charged in the grid on that Wednesday because it was a special one-off occasion, perhaps you had a business trip or something, so you had to charge your car up, and don't be surprised if next Wednesday it has fully charged itself in the grid because our last week you you used a lot on a Wednesday. So now it thinks, oh, well, you might do that again. So it's trying to get yourself ready. So you've got to think about how it works and how it operates and keep that in mind. So if you, you, you basically need to have some kind of schedule that it can work to and then use the weather predictions to try and accommodate and support you in that. It can't handle surprises um, and you shouldn't be frustrated if you know, that one or two times you'd kind of fully charge things and then try to kind of counter for that. So my tip there is if you're going to do big car charging and stuff like that, you want to try and do it during those off-peak times because then the power wall kind of ignores those usage because, you know, it can't beat the, the cheap rate. Um, so it's not going to try and charge up more to enable you to charge your car at that stage. It's looking about basically the activities that happen during the peak times to do stuff. So I hope that makes sense. The main things to keep in mind is allow, you know, up to a week when you first enable this for it to start working. So it also needs to know about your historical usage. Keep in mind that it's using that combination of historical usage and weather prediction to decide where it should charge from the grid or not on top of the power wall. There will be occasional maintenance cycles where it pulls from the grid, even during peak times to try and do that, but it will try and focus um, doing that in off peak it's it's not mystic meg it can't predict the future so it can't know what you plan to do in your head it doesn't know that in the morning oh i'm going to fully charge my car why the hell didn't you stupid thing um charge um and if you make a habit of you know, charging your car or using lots of electricity on certain days don't be surprised if then the following week it tries to ready itself for that because it thinks you're going to do the same thing again. So they are the main things to keep in mind. I do wish there was an ability where you could override that because you know you're going to need to charge your car extra because you've got a really long trip. So you are charging it in those four hours. You want to continue to charge after and drain the power wall. Um, but it, it doesn't have that. Um, and I think most of the time, if that's frustrating, you don't really need that if you think about how it works and kind of how those advanced functions work. So hope that's helped. Please leave comments and ask additional questions if it's not clear in the comments below. Let me know how you're getting on with your Powerwall. Maybe if you have a gateway too, um, you're getting a slightly different experience, but I think in general, the AI machine learning component of, of the Powerwall works uh, pretty much the same regardless of what model you have. 
Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.